humans, let's YouTube. So these are some very fun, exciting times. First of all, to start the new year off, January 1st, I moved to Nashville. Oh, crazy. And then, went straight from that, start winter jam, and it was crazy. Also, West Virginia is freezing. I literally was frigid, and it was snowing, which is so beautiful and so crazy. I should have brought a sled because I was pretty much slipping all the way down that ramp trying to get into the building. But yeah, first night was great. Any other bullet points from that night? Oops, thanks, Shani. Night two, we were in we were in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, y'all, if you've been out to Winter Jam and you've seen Brit Nicole set, just comment and tell the people how awesome it is. I'm like side stage dancing my heart out every single night, you guys, every single night, and I will be doing it for the next 40 nights. Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> I love Grand Rapids. I don't know why, I just love it. It was even more freezing than the first place, but thank you for everyone who waited in line because, y'all, that was a great show. I had photos that day for the new merch. We got these Change the Game shirts. They're pink. Super cute. Check it out. Probably like a good little snapshot right here. Um, and then we drank a lot of coffee that day. Then we got to eat lunch with Britt and Lainey. Then we headed back to Nashville, and we kind of got, well, we thought we were going to have a few off days, but things kind of got a little crazy. We ended up having to do a photo shoot uh, with the old merch. Nashville was great. Had a girls' night. Watch This Is Us, my favorite show. Love Night Super Drive. Thought it was good at this time, didn't you? And then we ate popcorn and M&M's, my favorite snack. Ooh, yes. Popcorn and M&M's will get my heart beating every time I eat it. <laughs> so when we were in Nashville, um, the designer for Wild Blue, her name is Marla, she came and we designed my spring collection for Wild Blue. It's so cute, y'all. It's definitely my favorite line. So it is Sunday, January 15th, 
and we're in San Rafael, Florida, and I'm sure you're gonna hear Winter Jam going on in the back, but there's um, some heavy stuff on my heart because this morning we had jam church, and God just spoke to me in ways I just was not expecting today. It's amazing that God gives us hope in a hurt world. And when I went to lunch with my friends later, I started thinking about my life and like how that relates to me because he was telling the story when all these people in Acts were on a boat and basically an earthquake came and they were like, oh gosh, like we're gonna die, all these things, but they're like trying to like throw stuff off the boat to save their boat. And God spoke to, I believe it was Saul or Paul, not really sure. And he said, take courage because you're gonna make it, but your ship's not. These people are like, how in the world are we gonna make it and our ship's not, it's impossible for us to live. And God's like, take courage because things are gonna get bad and things are gonna get crazy and you are gonna lose your ship, but you're gonna make it. And I realized how relatable that was in my life because I think for so long, well, back up. I was in this really bad time in my life, very painful. And coming from that and hiding that in my heart, I would pray for my future. And I would pray for like things to like get better and like, I don't know. I would pray for this future, but I never stopped to pray for the healing of my hurt in the past. And now I have this future, but now my past and that hurt is catching up to it because I didn't deal with it. And I'm gonna be okay because God is good and God is faithful and I am okay. But maybe some of that didn't make it along the way because I, I didn't necessarily let it all go. And uh, I'm glad that I see that now. To walk with the Spirit in perfect peace, you have to let it all go. And I was not willing to do that. I didn't want to talk to God about that because I didn't want to break down. I didn't want to cry. I didn't want to think about it. I um, didn't want to go there. I was ashamed. I was ashamed to tell God who knew it all. And I hid that. And I can't have peace when I'm hiding that. And I can't fully be in joy when I, in the bottom of my heart, I'm like, stuck back there and so today realizing that honestly this is like crazy but like ever since I've been at that time literally like haven't been able to cry like I would say that my eyes are like dried up or something like I don't know like if it's because I was in so much pain that now like I just like can't cry until like today I started crying I was like what what is happening what is happening there's water coming from my eyes but I think because I finally I'm asking God to heal me from that. I'm not running from that anymore. I'm not running from what once was my weakness because I know God's gonna create that as my weapon of strength. And what's crazy is every night at Winter Jam, I get on stage and I say that to people. I say, you may think that this is your weakness because the enemy told you this or the world told you this or that person, that guy, this thing has told you this, but hold it up high and say, when Christ changed the game on the cross, this became my strength. Every night I would say that, but for some reason I never stopped to apply it to my own life and thinking how, that was the darkest time of my life. That was the most painful time of my life. But now, when I'm able to open up and share and talk to people about it and like make that a strength, make that something that God's gonna do a lot of good with, I think that's gonna be incredible and I look forward to that. And so maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh gosh, I'm so ashamed of what I've done. I'm so ashamed of where I've been. I can't get out of this pain and you've been not praying for healing and that hurt because you're ashamed and praying for hope for the future, I want to encourage you to not just leave that and let it be. Use that. Each part of your life is a story and a testimony. Use it for the good of God and then run to the future, holding God's hand and saying, I love you, God, because I am weak. I am not perfect and I've been through a lot, but oh, God, thank you for letting me soar. Like, God, we get to run in that and rest in that. And I'm saying this, imagine like I know it, saying it like I know it all, but I'm coming to this conclusion as I'm talking to you on January 15th, um, 2017 in Sunrise, Florida. You know, you just never know when God's gonna hit you. You just never know, and I'm thankful for it. <sighs> Dear God, thank you so much for such an incredible start to 2017, God. I just pray that you just show up and
we know you're there. God, I pray that you help the Holy Spirit to just be on us so that we can see the people that we need to talk to, know the words that we need to say to them, know who we need to speak out to. God, I pray that in this time of craziness in our country that you will just reign higher than all. God, I pray that we will not look outwardly, but we will look above and we will see all the good that you're doing in the world and that we will keep our focus on you and you alone. Thank you for everyone out there watching today. I pray blessings over their life. I pray that they know they're beautiful, that they are loved, that they are cherished, that they are worthy of love. And no matter what hurt they've been through in the past, that they don't just pray for our future, but they pray for freedom in that pain. And they pray that they have a purpose. Amen. Bye, friends. Look at Cheyenne. She got the Sharpie. I'll leave the Sharpie every single night. She is so mad at me. Run, Shadi, run!